Hey, Fidel Master John Curtis. Uh, I just played a game against Dito Teo, rated 2051 from the Philippines. And uh, I'm showing you this game because uh, um, the chess.com analysis uh, coach said I played with the rating of 2550. Right, 2550. And I found that the end game uh, was more than instructional when I looked at it in the chess.com analysis room. And so I'm going to present this uh, game to you uh, because I want you to uh, look at the methodology that I used to, to achieve my 2550 performance rating for this chess game. Right. And what you're going to notice more than anything else is how a middle game is converted to an end game and how a, uh, a, a knight um, with correct pawn moves and correct uh, piece play overtakes the bishop until finally the bishop is uh, reduced to nothing more than a spectator as the pawn's queen. Okay, so let's get on with the game. Right, so I'm playing the black pieces. Dito Teo is 2051, as I said, and he's playing the white pieces. And uh, right, so uh, knight f6, we just put, he plays b6, so he wants to fear and shadow his bishop and put some pressure on me. So I just did the counter fear and shadow. A chess engine um, uh, saying uh, your bishop is ready to be developed to an active square. So I think, oh, that's that's exactly how I was thinking. He played bishop to b2, so I played bishop g7. Uh, both book moves. He played knight f3, book move. And I castle, which is the, the book move. He played e6. This is to prepare d4. It's also to develop his bishop on e2. So I played d6, a book move, just to uh, open up my blacks, my white, uh, my black bishop, my white squared bishop, open it up, and to also control the uh, e5 square. He played bishop e2. He just develops calmly. He's preparing to build his position and. Uh, so uh, the opening is uh, pretty accurate. All book moves. I played c5. Um, c5 is good, the engine uh, coach says. He said, I had a better option, but this is not so bad. At this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the board a bit bigger for you so you can uh, enjoy the game a little bit more thoroughly. So just be patient with me while I, while I adjust that board. There we go. You can see the clocks, and you can see the evaluation bar there too, okay? Right, well, I proceed, he proceeded with castling. Apparently not the best move. Interesting, isn't it? Um, so that's not the best move. Well, what would be the best move? Probably d4. d4 looks like uh, a good move, as does uh, d3. I played knight c6. I thought, well, I'd better develop my pieces. The engine doesn't like it. It says it's an inaccuracy. It's not a mistake, but there was something better for me. Um, now, a better move for me may have been d5. I'll go back and I'll have a look and see if I can find that move. Is it d5? I'll just check. Just see what the engine says, because I'm not sure thinking I'll probably get it wrong but we have to work it out sometimes don't we otherwise we don't learn it doesn't look right it doesn't look right it's an inaccuracy e5 is best oh there you go so in that position e5 is the best move e5 okay right so I played knight c6 now you should play d4 D4 would prevent this move E5. So by playing A6, I should probably play E5 here. 
Um, I did, I played it in accuracy, bishop f5, and uh, e5 was best. He played d, d3, he's playing passively, and that's giving me a chance to uh, develop. So I played a6, and it's a star move, it's the best move. And there he played knight b5 to d2, again he's not playing d4. You can see the engine's got the arrow there, that's not me, that's a chess engine. And it's saying d4 was the best move. If you if you play a bit too passively, you can pay play uh, pay big penalties. So I play b5, and the engine says that's the star move, best move. So I'm playing like a grandmaster. Bishop to c c3. It's in this position. I thought to myself, I had to ass assess the position in a short amount of time. I got two minutes and 59 seconds. There are increments here. It's a three plus two second um, uh, chess game. But I thought to myself in this position, um, his bishop is very, can be very strong. And uh, I thought, well, long term, I want to take, take control of squares. Excuse me. Squares on my terms. So what I played was pawn takes pawn. Now, it says rook b8 was the best move, okay? But uh, it says it's a good move. My move is a good move. There's not much difference in it. It's it's uh, 0 0.17 to 0 0.16. So there's nothing in it. He played pawn takes pawn. And now I, I, I came up with an idea. And the idea is, gee, I'm saying to myself in this position, gee, I'd love to occupy that square. I'd love to occupy that square. I think, oh, how do you do that? Well, I played knight to hit eight. Anyway, so he, he played queen c2, so I took his bishop, right? And then when he took with the queen, I played queen hits queen, right? Now, if he, does, if he wants to retain this diagonal, he's got a problem. Because if he moves his queen back to uh, keep the diagonal, then I'll hit him with the castle, right? And they get another tempo, okay? So that's why I played it. And the engine says it's a star move. It's a grandmaster move, queen a5. And I was so happy about this, especially when I looked at it and I found I had a performance rating of 2,550. It's the English opening, it's the Anglo-Indian. So I played knight takes, and you see, oh, normally the knight on the side of the board is bad. The point is, can we convert it into something good? This position here, white has an edge. If you have a look at the evaluation bar, white bar is bigger than the black bar, so white's got a slight edge. Okay, but he played rook there. Now, but he's got a problem. He can't, he can't get to the seventh rank because there's a knight there, right? Anyway, so I thought, well, I better get my pieces working. So I moved my knight there. Apparently knight f6 was better. However, not me, I played that one. And he played rook to b6, so I thought, I know what I'll do, I change rooks. So I moved my most inactive rook, that's my rook on the f file, to b8, to try to change castles, right? And he played rook there, which is the best move. And white still got a slight advantage. I took the rook, and he recaptured, and you think, well, how on earth did you start winning this position, John? Right, well, well, I'll tell you what, it was with difficulty. I played bishop back. That's not, I didn't, I wasn't really happy about it. When I played it, I thought that maybe I should have played um, bishop here. Right, so I, I thought maybe bishop there might have been a better move. Because I'll tell you why. In some variations, our oh, engine says D5 was better. Uh, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, we, us humans, we struggle to find good moves. Anyway, but uh, the reason why I didn't like this was because I knew that if some stage there he, he dislodged my knight, um, I, um, I, uh, my, I'm, my, I'm, I can't really go here because he can pin my bishop against my king, right? 
So uh, he's still got a little bit of an edge. He anyway, played D, D4, and uh, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll take that pawn off, which he, and he recaptured with the pawn. So now I looked at the position, and I thought, I better move my king over there, or at least give the impression I'm moving my king over there to support my bishop on C8. Right? And he played knight to G4. And that, that's a good move, but I played pawn h6. I'm trying to slow his game down a little bit. And he played bishop hits castle. Well, here, I played this move. I played rook a7. I invited my opponent to, to pin my bishop and to take it. You know why? Because I assessed it that I had a bad bishop. <laughs> okay. I, I, that, that was my assessment. Anyway, played rook there. It's the best move, and white's still got an edge, as you can see from the evaluation bar. So I took the knight, and he took the bishop with check. And the king goes there. That's forced. Oh, no, it's not. It's not even the best move. Knight here, apparently, is the best move. I hate that move. So I played my move, which is king to g7. Okay, he played. he played this move here. G3. So here I am. I'm sitting here with uh, 2 minutes and 16 seconds on my clock. And uh, Dito Teo from the Philippines, he's got 1 minute 34 seconds. So I've got a slight advantage. I know he's under pressure. And what I, I liked in this position was I liked the fact that I could play knight here. But I wasn't sure about bishop there, but I'm on the pawn. If he pushes it, I could just reroute my knight. So probably knight there is the best move. And I'm sure the engine said it was. But I played pawn there, which is not best. And now he played h3. Now have a look at the, this position. After, if I, in this position, had I played knight here, because this is his weakness, he can't come here to defend it. He can't defend the pawn. Black's, Black's got an edge. According to the bar, slight edge after this knight move, right? I, I saw it, but I thought, oh no, I'll put, I want to push my pawns. So I pushed a pawn and uh, he played h3 and I thought, oh, you beauty. Now I'll go there. So I played the star move, the best move. And we're now we're threatening a pawn. So he moved his bishop there. And apparently that's the best move. I took the pawn off, right? And now I've, I've got... At last, I've, I've made inroads. I've got hold of his valuable pawn. And now he played knight there. Well, c5 was his best move, believe it or not. Um, he had to break through the position and try to cause some trouble, but he didn't do that. So I took his knight with check. The, what, I, what I observed about this position was my knight on a5, this knight here, if I could put that knight there, I get a total blockade uh, in the position. And my pawn chain is strong. He support the knight, and there's nothing he can do. And I threatened to kick his bishop out so I can make progress. He took with the bishop, and now I found this move. And as you can see, the engine gives me an exclamation mark. It gives me an exclamation mark. Right. And when he played bishop here, I thought, you beauty, I'm going to play knight here. Engine didn't like it, but I thought it was the best move. I, it, I, engine says I should play a5, but I didn't do it. Um, he played f4, and I thought, ha-ha, I see an opportunity. So I played there, and I attacked his bishop. I thought, where is that going to go? And he moved it there, so I took his pawn. And then he took back, so I went knight here. Right? And it's a star move, it's best move. We're attacking. Black's winning now. See how a little change in the position from moving that knight on the A file to the C5 square? And suddenly we've got an active position and we're, we're actually winning. And then he played rook here. It's the best move. He's trying to attack the weakest uh, thing I have on the board. So I took a pawn. Now, he took a pawn. Well, he shouldn't take that. He should have saved. He should have saved this pawn, apparently. Anyway, 
I took that pawn with check, and he went there, so I gave him another check. He thought he was just going to hit my knight and chase me away, but I played this move e5. Uh, engine preferred g5, but there's not much difference. Uh, as you can see with the evaluation bar, black is now winning, but you still have to win the game. You might think you're winning, but you're still going to actually win it, haven't you? Anyway, played rook there, and I played rook hits bishop. Now he here he starts having problems because I've got four pawns and he's got two, right? So all I have to do is attack things, and if he goes bishop here, well, um, he's not threatening anything. I could just play g5, and uh, I'd be very comfortable, I should think. Um, after bishop there. I could even play knight takes bishop. I'm pretty sure that I'd be winning after knight takes bishop. All right. So he played the... Uh, look, hold on a second. What did he do? Yeah, so I played rook here and he played bishop, uh, rook, rook checks. That's all right. So I took his rook off and his bishop take, took. And now I, I, I sense that this pawn won two, three, three, four moves, and it's a queen. And so what do we do? How do we stop that? Well, this is what we do. Play knight there, star move, best move. And as you can see, this knight uh, is going to come here, and there's nothing he can do to move this pawn forward. Both pawns here are stagnant. They can't do anything. And I had three connected pass pawns. So all I have to do is be sensible. So I played that move. He played pawn up. Not, I played knight hits bishop, threatening his bishop. And he went there. He, apparently he should take the pawn, but that doesn't help him. I'll just take it off. I played pawn there. Put, put my pawn on a, on a black square to, to tie his other pawn down here. Because I knew that my three pawns would beat his bishop. Anyway, he played king there. So I just went king up. He went bishop there, I pushed a pawn, he moved his king back, I pushed that pawn, he went there, I gave him the check, he's got to go back, and then I pushed another pawn, and my pawns are going forwards, he played bishop there, I put my king in the centre of the board, he went there, I pushed that pawn, star move, best move, and he played king there, and now pawn here. Now two pawns on the sixth, as we know, two pawns on the sixth, that are, as I've explained to you before, are stronger than a castle, or as strong as, strong as a castle. Play bishop there. So I just moved my king down, and all I'm doing is uh, moving closer with my pawns, and that should be the end of the game. He played king here, so I played knight there. I could have played pawn check, but I thought, well, no, I'll play knight there, because you know why? He can't stop pawn check. There's no, he can't, nothing he can do to stop it. And he moved his pawn forwards, hoping to go for a queen to distract me. And I simply gave him a check. He went there and I, pr I uh, promoted my pawn to a queen with check on e8. And that is checkmate. And that is how we beat Ditateo from the Philippines, rated 2051. And if I put the review thing up, you will see, I'll show you the review. Of the game it's going to come up in a second and you will see that I played with a performance rating of there it is 2550 and the chess.com coach said you really outplayed your opponent in that one the opening was balanced it was an incredible middle game by both players and you outmaneuvered your opponent in the end game. And that's why I tell you guys, it's understanding the positions. And there are four phases to the game. There's the opening, there's the middle game, the middle end game, and the decisive end game. So I beat my opponent in the four categories by getting down to the end game and finishing him off with a performance rating of 2550. Now, he wasn't playing badly because he still played with a performance rating of 2,250 himself. So uh, I really enjoyed that game, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Okay?
So it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Grandmaster Teddy. Grandmaster Teddy's here tonight. He's going to give me a bit of a kiss. Good night, good night, Ted. Good night, Johnny. <laughs> and uh, please thumbs up the video if you like it. And uh, we'll try to give you some more content from time to time. And if you uh, subscribe to the channel, you'll get notifications when more videos become available. And as they do, I might do a video on uh, if I see a really game, a game I really like from the uh, World Championship between uh, Jan Nippon Diachi and uh, Ding Liren. So I uh, look forward to that one. And uh, I'll see what I can put together for you guys. Okay? Bye bye now. All our love from Teddy and from me. And uh, God bless you all. Stay safe. See you later and good night.